Hi, I'm Paul, the Running Shoe Guru. This is Marathon Handbook, and this is my look at some of the best cushioned running shoes available on the market right now. Just a moment before we start, this is the home of unbiased reviews. I'm simply selecting my personal choices. We don't get paid by brands to feature their shoes or review their products. If I don't like an aspect of a shoe, I'll tell you about it. Bear in mind though, I've selected what I think are good shoes. Most of the comments you will hear about these shoes are positive. This video, we're looking at cushioned shoes. Now I think it's very easy when it comes to cushioning in shoes to simply select high stack shoes that are very soft, even bouncy. I've selected it into five kind of key categories, neutral, stability, trail, racing, and best of value. Because I wanted to look at shoes in each of those categories that the majority of people would find useful, usable, and runnable. First up, the best neutral cushion shoe, the Sukoni Triumph 21. There are shoes that feature higher stacks of cushioning, those shoes that may be softer, but ultimately I've chosen the Sukoni Triumph 21 because I feel the power run plus form that they use in this shoe offers the best all round running experience for the neutral runner. First of all, we've got a deep stack of cushioning here. Coming in at 37 millimeters in the heel, it's a 10 millimeter drop, 27 millimeters under the forefoot. 170 pounds, $160, 279 grams, 9.8 ounces. The foam itself has a texture and appearance of compressed polystyrene balls. We first saw this in the Adidas Boost over 10 years ago. Whilst it has that appearance, it does have a different feel. Whereas the Adidas Boost material tends to feel a little bit heavy and quite a dense, almost dull type material now, the Power One Plus is much springier, much livelier, and a smoother and responsive running experience to it. Stability wise, despite the high stack, we've got quite a broad footprint to this shoe and the way in which the midsole is the geometry of it, it flares out a little under the foot. So the foot's kind of centered within the shoe and that creates a bit of natural stability. It's a real thick stack under the heel, that 37 millimeters. It's kind of strange how you notice the feedback and the responsive nature of the shoe when you get to the toe off point. So you're pushing away and you do notice it kind of gives you a little something back. It's not springing you down the road, but it does have a nice energized feel to it. We have a new flat knit engineered mesh upper, neat padding in the tongue and around the ankle collar and heel. The constructions of mesh here as well is beautiful. I think it's probably one of the nicest fitting shoes of 2023. I'm on my second pair of these. In fact, I don't feel any signs of compression and this pair must have 250 miles on it. So still going very strong. Doesn't feel like it's lost anything at all. Good rubber coverage. One thing you do get with Sukoni's power run type forms is this scuffing and a little bit of grubbiness to the sole. It does kind of become almost impregnated into it. Doesn't detract from the durability of the shoe at all. But overall, it's just a shoe that I've been wearing for everything. Steady runs, work, walking the dog, running errands, all that kind of stuff, because it's just so lovely. The Vux Adrenaline 23, great cushioning and great stability that contributes to that cushioning. And why does it contribute to the cushioning? If you roll from side to side, then you will want a little bit of stability. And if you're not maximizing the cushioning by keeping the foot neutral, then that great cushioning is sacrificed. In the Sukoni Triumph, if you believed you were neutral, but were over pronating, you wouldn't be spreading your weight evenly across the shoe. So you wouldn't be maximizing. So it wouldn't matter how good the cushioning is. But in the Adrenaline 23, you've got the band's guide rails, which feature wrapping up and casing the heel in the rear foot, both sides of the shoe, wide, stable base. You can see how the foot cups into the heel there and that keeps it stable. So the Adrenaline 23, 135 pounds, $140, 28.5 millimeters in the heel, 12 mil drop to 16.5 in the forefoot, 289 grams, 10.2 ounces. A little bit on the heavier side, but it's a very durable shoe as well. This is the shoe for daily miles, putting the miles in, racking the miles up, you know, 50, 60 miles a week, perfectly capable in the shoe. Features books DNA Loft V2, cushioning material. It's a shoe that will be great and deal with lots of foot types, 
lots of gate types as well. All the pronators suits them down to the ground. It's probably the best selling, it's certainly my most popular selling shoe for people that need a little bit of stability control, over pronators, etc. Does the job beautifully, available in wide fittings as well, so suits a lot of foot types. Books Adrenaline 23, best cushion neutral shoe with support. When we talk about cushioning, people think a lot of it. Well, Hawker, all their shoes have lots of cushioning. They almost created the maximal cushioning category. What must be the king, the daddy of them is the new Stinson 7. Your foot is sat there and this dual density kind of construction does encase the foot to create stability. 42 millimeters there, yeah? So there's a lot going on. Five millimeter drop down to 37 in the forefoot. So if you want cushioning, if you want a trail shoe that can go anywhere, the Stinson is it. And it's stable as well. Now it's not a shoe for very technical trails, but for paths, gravel tracks, dirt tracks, forest trails, that kind of thing, then this is it. And it feels good as well. When you put your foot in there, it's a real nice experience. 170 pounds, 170 dollars. We've got a beautiful engineered mesh upper. It's very durable. Rubberized protective overlays in the toe. This flared Achilles heel tab here flares away from the Achilles. No irritation on there. Lots of padding in the tongue. It's just very plush cushioned upper blush as well very well made i've got that dual layer construction and we have got hawker's h frame stability system going on in here as well and the way that works is we've got lateral framework within the shoe that's slightly firmer on the lateral and medial side with a cross section in the middle so we've got the h construction the rest of the cushioning is softer so your foot essentially sinks into here in the heel and is balanced in the forefoot as well. Got a real wide footprint to it as well. So it creates a lot of stability and it does feel very stable. Despite your foot feeling very high, it's sat neatly within the shoe and it's a really nice ride actually. It's not for fast running. You're taking your time, you're exploring the countryside and casual, long, easy runs on the trail. If you want plenty of cushioning, the Hawker Stinson 7 is the one for you. When it comes to cushioning in a road racing shoe, the Prime X from Adidas. Now, there is a Prime X 2 about to launch when this video is going live, but the Prime X version 1, 50mm stack, it's an 8.5mm drop to 41.5mm in the forefoot. It's Adidas's Light Strike Pro form. Then you can see just in there the exposed energy rods. Okay, so we're not using a carbon plate in here and they sit within the shoe like metatarsals like so adding some curve and increasing that toe off it's interesting that adidas say the combination of the light strike pro form and the energy rods limits energy loss as opposed to energy return the springier materials do lessen the compression rate if you like because there isn't a material that can propel any additional weight that's placed on it so if you had a basketball if you strap a brake to it it doesn't bounce higher a shoe with a small bit of form isn't going to propel an athlete down the road but it is going to lessen the loss of energy and that leads to a sensation of propulsion it has got bags of cushioning the one caveat with the prime x is stability this is a shoe that i do keep returning to for sessions and long runs on uneven pavements and road surfaces you are brutally aware of the instability if the, the road surface is anything but super smooth and flat weighs in at 251 grams 8.85 ounces 250 grams for 50 mil of cushioning is amazingly light you've also got continental rubber outsole very durable very hard wearing see very little signs of wear on this shoe the rubber extends all the way to the back of the shoe nike please it stays in shape and it's a real durable feel to it as well i'd ask primex too for my final selection when it comes to cushioning i wanted to choose a shoe that had a very nice cushion feel that's quite versatile that's accessible to a lot of people and offers great value 
So I have selected the Puma Velocity Nitro. First of all, it's great value. It's £105. $120, but you've got nitro foam from Puma in there. There we go. So nitrogen infused foam, similar to that used by books in a lot of their glycerin models, um, Hyperion, stuff like that, which are a lot more expensive. May I add Puma are also using nitrogen. The larger molecule creates a more durable, more responsive foam. The Puma Natural Foam does feel a little bit softer than some of Buck's shoes, but it's smooth riding, it absorbs the strike of the foot into the ground, and it's got a very nice smooth toe off. Well made up as well, I mean Puma have been around a long time, they know about making shoes and they can make a good shoe. And it's almost a little bit of a travesty that they're not more widely adapted and accepted, but for the money, I think the Velocity Nitro is a great value shoe. It's an 8mm drop, 33mm stack in the heel, 25 in the forefoot, 257 grams, 9 ounces. It ticks a lot of boxes. Great, stable, neutral cushion shoe, responsive feel, smooth, light, well made, comfortable, great value. Puma Velocity Nitro. I am absolutely certain that you will agree or disagree on some of the shoes. What categories did I miss out? Comment below. I'll feature them in a future video. We are going to do a roundup, an end of year kind of celebration, awards of some of the best shoes around. Let us know what categories you'd like to see featured or what individual shoes you'd like to see reviewed. Bear in mind, I tend to review shoes that I feel have a wide appeal and will suit a lot of runners as well. If you have any questions, pop them down below and I will always do my best to answer. Please subscribe, it's Marathon Handbook, I'm Paul the Running Shoe Guru, but once again, thanks for watching.